Welcome to Bentonville Film Festival. Thank you. I'm just really excited to be here. Um, you're going to be screening later. Yes. But it has screened in other places, correct? Correct. What kind of feedback are you getting? Because this person is pretty iconic that you decided to cover. Yes. Um, so far, the response has been actually overwhelmingly positive. And um, a lot of what I'm hearing from people is they appreciate how going into the film, whatever their opinion of Thomas Kincaid, whether they love him or hate him, they come out with a feeling of having um, gotten to know him in a much more complex way. And, you know, it sort of brings up this feeling like, you know, everybody's a human being and we should all like appreciate just the complexities of being a human. That being said, for those that haven't seen it yet, give us a little overview of what your documentary is about. Sure, yeah. So Art for Everybody is about the painter Thomas Kincaid, who was known as the painter of light. He was uh, very prominent in the 1990s and early aughts. Um, he painted cozy cottages and peaceful gardens, sometimes in sort of fluorescent colors. <laughs> um, but he really rose to fame and fortune by um, kind of marketing himself to what we would probably consider culturally conservative Americans. And he presented himself as this sort of upstanding, um, wholesome painter of American family values. Um, but then he died in a cloud of scandal. And after he died, his daughters went into the vault where he kept all of his work. And they discovered a whole other body of work that is dark and psychologically complex. So art for everybody kind of asks the question, who is the real Thomas Kincaid? What kind of access did you have? Because you're getting into a lot of stuff that nobody even knew about. Yeah, that was a really interesting journey. Um, basically, um, the Kincaid family, like we, we sort of heard through friends in the art world that there might be an interesting story about Thomas Kincaid that has never been heard before. So we got in touch with the Kincaid family and basically they told us about all of these things and including the vault. And we just knew that, you know, there's definitely an interesting story just based on that with the, you know, the, the different bodies of work. But as I started to look into it, um, I also found that the story touched on sort of bigger cultural questions like what is art and who gets to decide. And at the same time, because Kincaid was such a prominent cultural figure, he really, um, his, his life story sort of touches on these or intersects with these um, moments in American cultural history that were really important and that actually resonate with where we are today. Um, and I think that, um, you know, the family was like amazing to work with. Um, they wanted to tell the story and they were incredible about um, basically trusting me and being vulnerable. And uh, again, like the audience response has been incredible. Like people really appreciate how brave the Kincaid family is in bringing this story to light. Yeah, I didn't get a feeling that it was a whitewash or exploitative. Exactly. And actually, that was when I went to them, I said, look, you know, I'm not interested in doing a hatchet job. I'm also not interested in making a puff piece. I want it to really, like, be honest and as truthful as it can be. And they were like, yes, we want that, too. Um, I saw that you had access to a lot of his old interviews. Did the family have all this or did you have yeah. to go out seeking through the no, archives? It was, you know, there was this huge archive of material. Like our production actually sent a production assistant to where the Kincaids had their like storage unit with all of the stuff in it. And they rented a van and the van was filled from top to bottom with boxes of tapes that were made for his, you know, corporate and branding, you know, marketing um, exercise. There were home videos. There were boxes and boxes of fan letters. There were photographs, and there were um, these audio cassette tapes. Which, when you look, when you watch the movie, the, you can see the, the audio cassettes, you know, play a, a fairly prominent role in um, illuminating like what young Thomas was hoping for and looking for in his career and life. Now, um, I always agreed originally with him. He wasn't my cup of tea, 
my sister adores him and a lot of people I know adores his paintings because his paintings are beautiful and getting to see his other stuff through your documentary I was like ooh there was a whole other that he could have just had a career just on that mm -hmm. so I appreciate you you know sharing that with the world because <laughs> yeah. that was that was a treat it's always cool to see an artist and see everything just like Georgia O'Keeffe wasn't just you know the, the bare bones she had a whole other mm -hmm. that you know went and did what it did yeah I mean I think that maybe um it, I feel like this is actually resonant with where we are in our culture today. Like we have this sort of Instagram, TikTok kind of like branding thing happening in our culture where, you know, the thing about branding yourself or turning yourself into a brand is that you have to be pretty consistent with the one th facet of yourself that you decide to put out there. And I feel like with Kincaid that that is what happened. You know, he basically landed on this painter of light thing and it was super successful. And then he kind of got sort of locked into this gilded cage that he had built for himself. And the complexity of his interests, artistic or personal, was kind of shut out by that. So I, I, I think it's, um, it's actually kind of a universal comment on like what happens when you deny yourself like full self-expression and the costs of turning yourself into a brand. And um, how long did it take you to do all the interviews? How, how many years? <laughs> oh my God. So we actually made this film in record time. Um, we started shooting in February of 2022 and we finished in March of 2023, like f our final. That never happens in a documentary, it, it's, ever. It's, yes, it's, and, and actually, and I've probably taken a few years off of my life and I definitely have more gray hair because that was a very intense marathon process. Um, but it was worth it, you know, it really was. It was, it was just a wonderful thing to do. I loved the, the style you did it in. Who was your cinematographer? We had um, several people shooting our, I would say our sort of our main cinematographer was a woman named, uh, is a woman named Tasha Van Zant, who's done like just incredible, beautiful cinematography all around the world. And I loved collaborating with her. Um, and then we had um, other people in different places because we did have to travel to, you know, like New York or, you know, New Mexico or whatever it was. So. Uh, uh, was that, did you decide to do the look of the film almost like a Kincaid painting? Because that's what it felt like to me. Right, yes. I mean, I did want it to be painterly. Um, and I also, wherever possible, I wanted to show people in their homes or in their location with artwork around them. Because I do think that, um, I mean, Kincaid's thing was art is for everybody. You know, we should have art for everybody. And he he developed that very early on in his life because he lived in, he grew up in very poor circumstances and he lived in a house where if you were to look at the photos of his childhood home, you can see that the walls are basically bare until he starts painting when he's about, say 12 or 13 years old. And once he starts painting, you start to see in the pictures, he's hanging them up in his own home because he loved art so much and he wanted to be surrounded by art and have it in his home. So I kind of wanted to honor that and also just sort of remind everyone like how art is an important part of our lives. It's not just, you know, like a, it's not like um, an extra ben bonus or something like that. It's really important to people. Yeah, I like the way you included a letter from from a fan who said she lived on a fixed income she, she, and she had just torn out mm -hmm. a picture from a magazine of his and it gave her such joy. You know, that actually was very common. There were a lot of people who could not afford the prints and so they would buy the calendar and they would cut the pictures out of the calendar and hang them up. So in a way he was like able to achieve his goal of art for everybody in that sense. So like even if you can't afford, you know, framed, a gilded $1,500 like framed print, then you could still have his art hanging up in your home. That was really cool. I liked that. Mm -hmm. um, what do you want people to take away from this when they see it? Yes, I love this question. So <laughs> I feel 
that in the world that we're in today, you know, like, well, a person like Thomas Kincaid was really polarizing, right? Like you either loved him or you hated him. And in our current um, environment, I feel like, you know, political discourse and the social media landscape are both like pushing us with other, along with other factors, pushing us to dehumanize each other. And what I want people to take away from the film is remembering how important it is to treat other people with nuance and compassion, even when they have different backgrounds than you do or different beliefs. Um, you know, we all deserve compassion. And I feel like, you know, we need to rehumanize each other because that's the only way that we're going to be able to move forward as a society. That's brilliant. It really is. Um, are you working on anything else? Or is documentaries your your thing? Yeah, I mean, I've worked in documentary for a long time. Uh, I've been an editor for a long time, but this is my debut as a feature director. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very happy about it. Um, and I have like a couple of things that are in extremely early stages of development. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to come back in a year or two and share them with you. <laughs> there you go. Have you had any distribution nibbles at this? Because with a name like Kincaid, mm -hmm. I would think right. they would want to distribute it. Yeah, I mean, we have a sales agent um, and, you know, they're trying to show it around to buyers. At the moment, the documentary industry is in a contraction. And so what we've been finding is everyone, the buyers are all kind of just like waiting until the dust settles and then they'll start buying again. So very few films have been selling this year. Like one film sold out of Sundance, one film sold out of South by Southwest. It's very unusual. It but is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but um, I think, you know, I think probably somebody is going to snatch it up. it up I hope <laughs> I think so I mean because for one thing it's a beautiful documentary thank you so much and it sh doesn't cater to one side or the other it is the most one of the most objective ones I've seen in a while because usually most documentary if I could don't don't get mad they have an object they you know they have yeah. an agenda <laughs> and you didn't you were just saying here's everything mm -hmm. and I really liked that about it thank you, you know? well I mean I sort of feel like I did have an agenda but my agenda was sort of like what I said about what happens when you look at the full complexity of a person, like you have to feel compassion for them. And you have to embrace it all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. It was such a pleasure.